Leave my mama alone, you bad man. I won't let you take Mama Peach away. Mama? Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the 10 biggest mysteries of the Super Mario games. For as simple and straightforward as Mario's games tend to be, there is still a wealth of unanswered questions about certain characters, worlds, and features. These are the ones that still bug us today. Which Mario mystery has you scratching your head from time to time? Let us know down in the comments. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The White Door Super Mario 64 DS If you've played this remake of the N64 classic, you'll recall that the room with the secret slide was redesigned to house the multiple playable characters. On one side, you have doors to let you play as Mario and Luigi, while on the other, you have Wario's door and a mysterious door surrounded by a white door frame and mat. For some time, fans speculated that Waluigi was originally going to be a playable character, but was cut at the last minute. However, it does have a purpose. Catch every rabbit in the game, including glowing rabbits, and you'll be given a key to unlock the door, earning you another power star. Though we have our answer as to what the door does, we fail to believe that this door was put in just for a single star. Its placement in the game just doesn't make sense to justify its existence. Mushroom Kingdom's Monarchy Sure, we all know that Princess Peach is the ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. It's common knowledge to just about anybody who at least plays games in the most casual sense. And yet, when looking at what a typical monarchy is, nothing about the Mushroom Kingdom's government makes sense. The ruler of a kingdom is usually the king or queen, not the prince, or in this case, princess. So if Peach is truly a ruler, why does she still have the princess title attached? Is she acting on behalf of two other rulers we have yet to meet? Is the Mushroom Kingdom rather a sub-kingdom of a bigger realm? Who can say? Sarasa Land, Super Mario Land. <laughs> Speaking of kingdoms, we gotta talk about Sarasa Land. We have seen Princess Daisy across a multitude of Mario games, but what about her home kingdom? The only time we ever got to see Sarasa Land was in the same game where it debuted Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. Since then, we've only ever seen the Mushroom Kingdom, the lands that surround it, and the galaxy it resides in. Even Isle Delfino has made recurring appearances across various titles. So what's up with Sarasa Land? Was that just a fever dream? Did the place just blink out of existence at one point? Is that why Daisy is always hanging around away from her kingdom? Hell Valley Sky Trees, Super Mario Galaxy 2. The Super Mario Galaxy games have a few enigmas of their own. One that has been plaguing the community for years is the infamous Hell Valley Sky Trees. These strange figures appear as a part of the skybox for Shiverburn Galaxy and Grandmaster Galaxy. There are no character models, no coding, nothing else that would hint at what exactly these creatures are. The only logical conclusion we've come to is from YouTube channel Geek Remix, who explains how these creatures are most likely a race of tree spirits from Japanese folklore called Kodama. Still, no official confirmation has been given. Whatever happened to Rosalina? Super Mario Galaxy. The first Super Mario Galaxy holds a touching story about Rosalina and the Lumas that can be experienced in the Comet Observatory's library. Though the story goes into quite a bit of detail in telling how Rosalina became the quote-unquote mother to the Lumas, it still leaves a couple of things unanswered. In the story, Rosalina mentions her father, mother, and brother. We know her mother has long since passed, or at least we can assume so from how she talks about her, but what of her father and brother? Perhaps one of these days we will get a hint of their fate, though we can't imagine it will be a happy outcome. Much sadness. Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. Leave my mama alone, you bad man. I won't let you take Mama Peach away. Mama? Mama Peach? 
In Super Mario Sunshine, we witnessed one of the most awkward and confusing scenes in Mario history. Bowser Jr. claims that Princess Peach is his mother. Peach seems to have no recollection of such events, which has lumped Bowser Jr. in with the Koopalings. They all have no place of origin, really. So if they really are Bowser's kids, who did Bowser get busy with and why are they not in the picture? Or maybe they're a bunch of young mutated Koopas who think Bowser is their dad because of how he looks like them, and then he kind of adopted them as his kids. It's all very confusing, and it's been a puzzle for years, and Nintendo may never actually reveal their true origin. One-Off Golfers Mario Golf Series Mario Golf is truly bizarre in the sense of how it introduced a sizable handful of characters who have never been used since their debut. In Mario Golf for N64, we had Plum, Charlie, Sunny, Harry, and Maple. Mario Golf for GBA had an almost entirely non-Mario cast, with only three of the 11 playable characters being Mario characters. And those three were Mario, Luigi, and Wario. Some Mario Golf game, man. Mario Golf Advance Tour had a similar roster where more than half of the cast was made up of completely random people. Why bring in all of these random characters if you aren't going to reuse any of them, even through the Mario Golf games? They just always seemed out of place in a series that is all about Mario. The Green Thwomp, Mario Kart 64. Remember that random green thwomp that was locked up in Bowser's castle? Yeah, totally not the creepiest thing we've seen in a Mario game. Not at all. Certainly not ever seen it in my nightmares. Now, initially one might ask why there is a green thwomp when they're all blue, like in Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario 64. Reason for this is because of the game's yellow lighting, so it makes this thwomp in particular look like it's green. But the one question that haunts us today is why was this one particular thwomp locked up? The maniacal laughing tells us the past is not pretty, and God help those of us who just saw this as kids and have been traumatized since. I am certainly one of those kids. A fate worse than death? Now we admit this is probably reading into things just a little too much, but humor us, will you? When you knock an enemy off the level, what exactly happens to them? Do they fall into an infinite void below? Do they meet a grisly end from falling from an incredible height? Do they really just get erased from existence? Just as video games, you know, de-render things out of existence? Look, we don't actually expect this part of the Super Mario games to ever get a thorough explanation, it's just, come on, it is interesting to think about, you know? Mass Block Murder Super Mario Bros. The real murder mystery is in the very first, the original, the legendary Super Mario Bros. As most Nintendo fans know, the NES booklet mentions that the Koopas used black magic to turn toads into stones and bricks. Mario and Luigi are breaking blocks made of stones and bricks. Most will assume the worst, but we have to question the extent of the crime. There's no way that most of the bricks in this game, or even a fraction of them, were toads, right? Just a few, right? Right? Somebody say yes, please. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.